I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is an honor again to grace the presence of such great people, the believers in Amen. Dublin. And Pastor, I thank you for John 4, 54, Jesus' second miracle. Amen. It is a miracle that you've invited me for the second time. <laughs> Amen. Bro. I must say, Pastor, you were such a blessing in my church. They have requested that you do another service toward the end of June. Amen. Thank you, brother. So, as you can see, we are also feeding from your ministry. Amen. Thank you. Before I read my scripture this morning, may I encourage the group to test positive for faith <laughs> and distance yourselves from doubt, <laughs> isolate from fear, and stay in the house where the scarlet thread is. Amen. Amen. If you look at the word COVID, C-O-V-I-D, but you read it the Hebrew way, from the right going back, it almost sounds like divorce. Uh -huh. And may God divorce his people from this virus. Amen. Amen. Keep you safe. My title this morning is going to be Miracles and Papal Prophecy. Amen. Miracles, plural, and Papal Prophecy. Hallelujah. My scripture will come from Revelation 13, verses 1 to 3. And verse 5, and verses 13 and 14, I read. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up. Notice what he sees, a beast. Hallelujah. Rising up out of the sea. Now watch. This is under Revelation 13. Amen. Which is a prophecy regarding the land of America today. Amen. So this beast rises up in Revelation 13, having seven heads and ten horns. We're going to identify those ten horns. We already know that the seven heads are the seven mountains. Yes. But what are the ten horns? We are coming. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Amen. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. Amen. This is a miracle in itself. And all the world wandered after the beast. Amen. Amen. Verse 5, and there was given unto him, singular, a mouth, singular, mm. speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him, singular, to continue forty and two months. Amen. We know that's the length of the great tribulation. Yes. Revelation 11. Amen. Now we connect with verse 13 and 14. And he, singular, male, 
do a great wonders, so that he singular maketh fire come down from heaven. We are going to look into this as contra our prophet Elijah. Who is he that's calling fire out of heaven? Amen. On the earth in the sight of men. Verse 14. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, plural, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. That's a very important link. Whatever he does in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Mm. So there are all kinds of miracles today. Amen. And as we are going to see in our study, both sides have miracles. Amen. God's side has got miracles. And the devil, by some reason and by some power manipulated, he's also able to produce miracles. Amen. But let us take it in stages. When you read from Revelation 13, 1, which we have done, you must be a student of the message to understand that the Kingdom of the West, the United States of America, when they started, they started with 13 colonies. Amen. Therefore, in God's wisdom, to place them in the mathematics of the Bible, God chose yeah. Revelation 13. Yeah. 13 states, and then you look at their flag, 13 stars, 13 stripes, you look at the eagle in its clutches, yeah. claws. Amen. It's got 13 arrows in a shaft, and that olive branch, count those leaves, they are 13. Amen. And count those Latin words, a pluribus unum, meaning many making one nation, 13 alphabets. Amen. And on and on and on, you can go for three hours identifying the 13th. Therefore, Revelation 13 is drawing our attention to the most West country, United States of America. Amen. I want to comment on verse two. Notice my fingers. John sees a beast. Mm. But then he says in verse 2, this beast, leopard, brings in the word leopard. Yeah. Then it brings in the word bear. Then it brings in the word the mouth of a lion. Amen. This is exactly the book of Daniel. Yes. Amen. When you study Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, mm. you see those four beasts. Amen. Amen. But for God to hide it from the wise and the prudent, in Daniel, watch the opposite. They start with the lion, mm -hmm. then it's the bear, then it's the leopard, and then it's the dreadful beast. Amen. Revelation 13, God just swaps it to hide it from the wise and prudent, and he starts from the bottom. He says, beast. Then he comes up, he says, leopard. He comes up to bear. He comes up to the lion. Amen. The second reason is, by the time John enters the vision of Revelation 13, the leopard kingdom is past, the bear kingdom is past, the lion kingdom is past. So John catches it up at the end. Like the great tree 
in the book of Daniel. Amen. Whose branches and leaves were destroyed, but it had its roots in the earth. Amen. So John is picking it up as it comes to its roots yeah, yeah. now at the end. Yeah. But then we see something very amazing by the time we come to Revelation 13, 11. Then he sees another beast comes out. This yeah. one comes out of the earth. Yeah. Like a lamb. The prophet has noticed it was not the lamb, it was like. Amen. Because the prophet identifies the mark of the beast. Paragraph 160, tape 54, stroke 5, stroke 13. He says he saw our American buffalo. Yeah, amen. So it is very clear then, before we proceed, mm. that God has drawn our attention to America in Revelation 13. Amen. amen. But I want us to proceed to Revelation 13, 13. The little horn of Daniel becomes that he in Revelation 13. Amen. I'm going to go a little slower than usual. Because when you teach, you must have a little moment of pause in between. Because not all the sponges drink in equally at the same time. Amen. <laughs> the prophet says some people are fast to catch. So in 30 minutes, your sermon is done. He says, but others are mediocre. So you go up to 45 minutes. <laughs> and then you have the slow ones. You almost have to go to an hour and a half to include them. Mm. But since when Moses, under the first exodus, took them out of Egypt, he told Pharaoh, we are not leaving one hoof behind. Amen. So we want to make sure everybody listening in follows the teaching this morning. Amen. Allow me to quote from 1962, stroke 3, stroke 19, end time seed sign. Paragraph 63. The wall between East and West Berlin had hardly dried up when the prophet gave this prophecy. As he looked into the future, he said, if they give the Eastern part of Berlin back, Amen. Then you know that the Roman Empire is back in the old circle it was, as in the days of Jesus. Amen, yes. You need to understand what led to the dividing of the city of Berlin. In short, the Second World War, Nazism. So when Nazism was defeated, we very well know that uh, America, England, and Russia came together, the big three, and they partitioned Germany. Their motive was to keep it down, to keep it less of a threat. But according to agreement, England gave back their portion Churchill did. Yeah. America gave back their portion, but somebody reneged on the promise and they held on. It went on and went on, and this is a long study of scripture until when you read Revelation 17 17. That woman of Revelation 17, we won't call her by name, we're on air. You know who she is. Yes. They began to negotiate behind the curtains. And the king of the north relented 
And when you read Revelation 17, 17, agree to give their power for a little while. Amen. Mm. Amen. And you very well know what happened in 1989 when it was announced that East and West Berlin would now become one and we all witnessed the wall being broken down. But not many people are aware that 1989 was already foretold in 1962, end time seed sign. Amen. We just gave you the quote. Amen. But since 1989, folks, put on your anointing jacket and your spiritual thinking kept. Amen. The old empire is back. But now they are wearing suits and ties, and they are smelling like Gucci. <laughs> so the 10 horns as of 2020, can they be identified? Yes. We know the seven horns are the mountain Amen. that great city is. And who's supporting? The seven horns, Belgium, mm. Netherlands, Luxembourg, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Ireland, you know which one, mm -hmm. Denmark, Greece. Now, if you are a student of prophecy, you'll understand why the other one brexited. Amen. Yes, bro. Because John saw 10 horns. Amen. Yes. If you ask him why they did the Brexit, they cannot answer prophetically, but they know there is something in the air. Yes, bro. Mm. Just like their forefathers left Ireland years ago and traveled west and founded this land that was like a wilderness, we're in Revelation 12, mopped up a few of those residents they found there, typing Israel, came out of Egypt, came into a land and mopped up the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Gittashites, and all the Kites. Amen. Now in 2020, we find ourselves with one or two or three questions which I'm going to attempt to answer by scripture and quotes. Amen. Amen. Where is the prophecy of when he comes out of the United States Amen. and he's placed over there, it'll drive the little church, the bride together. Yes. We are going to identify that prophecy today. Amen. Now we are told that this beast that is resurfacing in Revelation 10 once received a deadly wound. Amen. Well, it's amazing how history gives you two dates, and I'm going to give both of them so that the critics don't come down upon me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> there used to be an old Roman Empire. Some dates say that empire, the great wound, was inflicted in 465 AD. Others say no, 476 AD. There's a period of about nine years where they are dilly dallying which one is the correct date. But to us, the Christians, it doesn't matter which date it is, the wound was inflicted. Amen. 
But the scripture says mysteriously, the wound was healed. Amen. Because whereas you had Caesars, now you have somebody like a Caesar. Yes. But in a religious way. Yeah. So the world wondered how it continues, and the wound was mysteriously healed. But John picked it up. He says, Mystery Babylon. And Christ promised that the mysteries would be revealed to his children. When they said, why do you speak in parables? He says, it's for them not to hear me, but for you to understand me. Amen. So the wound took about 600 years to heal, and it has healed. And that power is on running, but I tell you, so smooth. Mm that it would deceive the elected if it were possible. Okay. Now let's fast forward and come to the year 1954. I'll give you the prophecy of when he comes out of the United States. Then we'll fast forward you to 1962. Then we'll bring you to 1964, what the prophet said. And before an hour is over, just about, we will come down with a spiritual thud <laughs> for us to wake up and realize the time of the rapture is just around the corner. Hallelujah. Amen. Notice how that the Bible says he in Revelation 13, 14, that whatever miracles he performs, he performs them in the sight of the beast, meaning his power is not exactly his own. Mm. It's supported by someone, something, some system, some movement in the background. Yeah. When you read Daniel 3, verse 5, there we come across an image that was to be worshipped. Yes. And it took the prophet to tell us, I would have never known. In my denominational days, we were taught that that was the image of Nebuchadnezzar himself. <laughs> but it took the prophet to travel vision-wise way back into Daniel 3 and say, no, it was an image of an holy man. Yes. Mm. In fact, the prophet even brought it very close and said, the king had made an image of Daniel himself. Amen. So it was a trick then to get God's people to bow before an image by presenting it as an holy man. Amen, amen, amen. You read between the lines, don't you? Yeah. If they made the image with the horns, fangs, even the children would run away. <laughs> but when you glaze it and present it like a religious icon, well, you are sure to reap millions and billions in deceit and in worship of the image. Mm. I've just done a video on Monday on this very Daniel 3 verse 5. The 10 instruments that were used to coerce the people to fall before the image. Amen. And we sounded a warning how music is very important Amen. in any church. Hallelujah. We identified the instruments, among them the dulcima, which has become your guitar, your banjo, your ukulele, you name it. 
And I was careful to say there is nothing wrong with any instrument in any church. Because the instrument does not play itself. Amen. It is the one behind the instrument that needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when there was a violin laying there, all beat up, beaten up, beat up, American English, <laughs> nobody wanted to buy that violin. Amen. Until it was bid for $2 and then $1, still nobody wanted to buy it. But when a Holy Ghost field man took it up, yes. And played by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He changed the value of the violin. Amen. So thank God for those churches where the musicians are born again and they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Amen. music is very important because over there in Daniel, music was perverted to lead them to the worship of the image. Amen. No wonder our prophet saw a vision of. The church in the last days. Yes. How they were dressed and what kind of music they were playing. Can you see the book of Daniel coming back? Amen. Absolutely. And he said that kind of music is going to lead them to take the mark of the beast. Yes. No wonder the prophet said the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation say the same thing. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to fast forward mm, mm, mm. and come to the Apollo missions. Yeah. There were quite a few of them. I will go as far as Apollo 11 because that's what we can identify in scripture and prophecy. But there were many Apollos and Geminis, etc., etc. Now, because we are on air, I have to speak within the code. <laughs> After this service, message people, punch in on your message tables, Apollo Thyatira. Amen. A quote will come up where the prophet began to identify who they worshipped as Apollo way back through the Roman times. Amen. 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 Another time when you have time, compare the gods of Greece and the gods of the Romans. They were one and the same thing, just changing names. Yes, true. And how they started all the way back in Egypt and came through Assyria, and they are still here today. They are still here today. So Apollo. Why then were these missions to the moon or outside the earth to fly around the earth, planning to go to Mars someday? Why were they not given the name Adam? <laughs> Why were they, were they not called Seth? Yes. Or for that matter, Matthew, Luke, John, Mark. By choosing the name Apollo and not choosing any Bible name, right there the spiritual mind picks up that the two spirits that started the war in heaven, yeah. meaning the two spirits that fought in heaven, Satan on the one side, God on the other, the battle continues on the earth. Amen. Now, may I shock you with a little pun, P-U-N? <laughs> I just referred to Apollo, but but not apologists. Apologist <laughs> here means we defend the truth. Hallelujah. We defend the message of the hour with positive arguments. Yeah. So while they have the Apollo on the one side, we are apologists on the one side, defending scriptures and quotations. Amen. Yeah. Now. The Bible says that this he of Revelation 13 deceived the earth with miracles. I am curious. My name is George. <laughs> My nickname is Curious George, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I like to find out 
what kind of miracles are these? Mm. Because in John 6 verse 2, we are told that Jesus was also known by the miracles he performed. Yes. So much so that if you want to know of miracles on the positive side, just read your Bible. Yes. All the way from Genesis to Revelation. Mm. Of course, I'm going to take you a little bit to Janus and Jambus who had miracles, but we have to identify them or as, as to what side of the pendulum they are. <laughs> because you see, in English, I was taught that all that glitters is not gold. Hallelujah. Amen. We have what they call fool's gold. Yes. Mm. And in geography, which I studied by the grace of God, it's called iron pyrite. Yeah. It looks so real until you bring it to the fire. Amen. That's what makes the difference. Amen. Bring it to the Holy Ghost fire. Amen. Then you will know what is true and what is not true. As for the miracles that are, that are recorded in the Bible, we shouldn't forget that the miracles of Jesus in John 21, 25, there were so many that if they were recorded, each one, Amen. there would not be books enough to contain them. Amen. Amen. So the ones that are recorded in the New Testament, abbreviated, are 33. Throughout uh -huh. Mark, or rather Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I love numbers. As the prophet said, God is in mathematics too. Yeah. Amazing how he lived 33 years in his earthly life. And in three years of his ministry, 33 miracles were recorded. <laughs> mm. Amen. Amazing. Amen. But the total recorded miracles of the Bible, I said total, they are 153 <laughs> recorded ones. Amen. And is it not amazing that in John 21, 11, you will read that after service, John 21, 11, when Peter cast in that net, that verse is the most mysterious verse among many in the New Testament. While it is referring to catching natural fish, it runs a spiritual parallel, it says, they caught so many fishes, so many, meaning without number, and yet the net didn't break, and then it slots in 153. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's a double prophecy right there. Mm. The natural fishes were so many, innumerable, but why does the scripture throw in 153? It's because miracles have a tendency to draw the attention of whosoever. Yeah. The net goes out, catches a lot, and from there Jesus says in his parable, then they sat down on the sand, that's the beach, and they sorted out. The crabs went back, the water snakes went back. And the real fish was signed in, brought in. Amen. And in Hebrew, the little bit I know, I said little bit. Every letter in Hebrew equals a certain number. Yes. And David has it right there in Psalms 119. Amen. David sings the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet from Aleph. Bet, Gimel, Det, Dot, Det, all the way down to Tav, 22 of them. Mm. 
So you can say things in Hebrew by using words or numbers. Amen. Mm. Amen. So if you take 153 as numbers back to the alphabets, remember you can do alphabets and numbers, or you can do numbers back to alphabets. Mm. At another time, we'll break it down for you and put it on the screen. Then you will see how 153 numbers works back to the Hebrew letters Bnei Cha Elohim. Bnei comes from Ben, singular, Bnei plural, son, sons. 153 works out to Bnei Cha Elohim. All the sons of God, meaning as the gospel net catches the spiritual sons, the fish, Amen. Peter's natural net caught so many fish. Amen. Did not Jesus say, Follow me, I shall make you fishers of men? Amen. So, as regarding miracles, let's move on a bit. So in Revelation 13, we see a man working miracles, pretending to be of God, but he is not. And of course, that is not our WMB. You know what code stands for? Yeah. God bless you. Whenever the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a standard. <laughs> So out of Revelation 13, there comes out a true prophet and another one. Amen. And if he's not true, he's false. Yes. So if this one, WMB, works miracles, we must find out how the other one works his miracles. And how? We have to take you back to the scriptures very quickly and show you how truth and error are intertwined. Amen. Why? When there was a tree of life in the Garden of Eden, yeah. also in the same garden, there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes. When God spoke to Adam, the serpent comes to Eve, agreeing, saying, Genesis 3 verse 1, Yay! That's the old English word for yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hath God said? Swings it around. Yes, God hath said. He swings it around. Yes, hath God said. So he takes a statement of fact. Yea, God hath said. By interplacing the words, turns it in, into a statement of doubt. Yea. Hath God said. So then, the true and the false may even quote the same Bible. Amen. Did not Satan come to Jesus quoting Psalms 91? Yes. Amen. But leaving out seven words Amen. of Psalms 91? Correct. When Abel built an altar, did not Cain also build an altar? Amen. Mm -hmm. When Moses had an altar with seven lambs, did not Balaam also have an altar with seven lambs? Amen. Amen. When Jesus went to the precincts and the premises of the temple, did not Judas also accompany him? Yes. By this time, you are pushing me to say, Surely you must tell us about Genesis and Jambus, and that's where I'm headed. Amen. I am going to have you chuckle a little bit <laughs> by taking you to the book of Exodus. Please come with me to the book of Exodus and find Exodus chapter 7 with me, verse 21. We are going to show you the contest between Moses, true prophet, 
and Jealous and Jambus. And I never knew that Jealous and Jambus were sons of one man. Uh-huh. Mm. Yes. Uh -huh. The book of Joshua says they were the sons of the very Balaam. Oh, oh. Right. So watch when Moses does a miracle in Exodus 7, 21. Don't laugh. It says, and the fish that was in the river died because Moses turned it to blood, right? Amen. And the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Are you ready for verse 22? Amen. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> a little bit of water remaining to be <laughs> a little bit of fresh water to drink <laughs> the magicians of Egypt <laughs> oxygen oxygen didn't go all the way up to their brains Amen. <laughs> they turned that to blood as well <laughs> so you see they had some power Magical, scientific, I don't know, but they had some power to duplicate. Let us go to Exodus 8, verse 7. We could keep you the whole day in the book of Exodus. All right. Pastor, I'm sure, knows exactly what I'm saying because he's a teacher, pastor. In Exodus 8, verse 7, we read, but we have to read verse 6. Of Exodus 8. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up hmm. and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with the enchantments. There you go again. Lack of oxygen. <laughs> they already have tons and tons of frogs in their houses, in their beds, in their dough, in their ovens. <laughs> you would think that these magicians will relieve the pressure. No, they did the same. <laughs> and to show that their leader himself was sick in his head, <laughs> Exodus 8 verse 10, we come to verse 9 of Exodus 8, and Moses said unto Pharaoh, glory over me. My, this is a deep title for a sermon. <laughs> a prophet says, glory over me. I have the supreme power over you and your magicians. <laughs> yeah. Glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses? that they may remain in the river only. And Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, tomorrow, oh my God. <laughs> Not enough oxygen. <laughs> if I were Pharaoh, I would say right now. Amen. So Pharaoh was content to spend one more night with the frogs. <laughs> <laughs> my brothers, let us return to Revelation 13 and we are winding up. The Bible, when speaking of the miracles he is able to perform in Revelation 13, limits it to able to bring fire down. Now this is not 2 Kings 1 verse 10 through to 12, where Elijah, by the power of God, brings holy fire down. Watch my emphasis, holy fire. Amen. He is able also, now you are beginning to see, like Janus and Jambus, and the rest of them on your teller evangelism, yeah. they are able to do something. Yes, amen able to bring fire down. Now I'm going to ask you before I close, how? And we are going to get there. But who is this he? Well, Paul already identified him. 
in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Yeah. As the man of sin that will be revealed in his time. Paul was in the first church age. Amen. Paul was looking at the seventh seal today. Amen. Like I could reveal him now, but it's not my duty. There must come a revelation, turn seven, a Malachi four prophet. There must come a Luke 17, 30, a son of man revealing the son of man. So I will leave it. Amen. And at that time, the bride will know who he is. Yes. The man of sin. And the Bible says clearly, this man of sin who's coming is after the working of Satan. Mm. Now, folks, I want you to write down these six, these six Roman letters. Amen. C for century, centurion. Why is called a centurion? Because he's over a hundred soldiers. Amen. So C equals hundred. D equals 500. I for one equals one. L, 50. V, five. X, 10. And the numerals of old Rome were based on these six letters. C, D, I, L, V, X. Amen. Just playing around. When they put the one before the X, it's nine. When they put the one after the X, it's 11. You, you get me, don't you? Amen. Amen. If you put the one before the V, it's four. If you put the, the one after the V, it's six. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, we've given you the numerals 100, 500, 1, 50, 5, 10. You do the maths. I won't because I'm on air. Amen. Now, here is a quotation, and we are now nailing it down. The prophet said in 1962, 0909, yeah. the countdown. Amen. He was preaching about spaceships, correct? Yes. Amen. Watch now. He's bringing your mind into a frame of understanding. He was preaching about all the capsules on the space project of America. Amen. He says, Amen. You punch in the two words, astronaut cans, C-A-N-S, astronaut cans, a quote comes up, tells you how they are trying to run out of the earth they are trying to find life somewhere else they know judgment is coming to this earth they know it Amen. They, they don't deny it themselves the scientists then the prophet speaks about the moon the moon project then he says in paragraph 101 they ain't going to get there mm. now remember this is 1962. The prophet is off the scene in 1965. Some critic is trying to say, uh-uh, but they did get there in 1969. Mm. Your prophet said in 62, they ain't going to get there. But I've just said to you, he left the scene in 65. Amen. So they didn't get there while the prophet was on the earth. Amen. Amen. It is not a false prophecy. Amen. They ain't going to get there. The one speaking said they ain't going to get there. And they didn't get there until after, long after 1965. Amen. Now let's look at this Apollo 11, which they claim landed on the moon. Now I have studied all the theories, both saying they landed and they did not land. Yeah. And if my prophet says they ain't going to get there, you go look into the space landings, but you have to have a sharp eye to pick up some of the manufactured evidence. Uh -huh. 
we know that on the moon there is no wind. <laughs> and when they show you the flag of those landing on the moon, the flag <laughs> is wavering. <laughs> it has since been discovered that was that landing was doctored in the studio where the aircon was on. <laughs> Our prophet said they ain't gonna get there, folks. Do we believe science or do we believe the prophet? Mm. It's up to you, but I believe the prophet. I'm an apologist. <laughs> yeah. I defend the prophet of the end time. Now, one of the astronauts by the name Neil Armstrong. Yes. Now, remember, we are paralleling the two before we close. Little did they take note of Isaiah 40, 4 0. Isaiah 40, verse 10, the strong arm of the Lord, not this Armstrong. Yeah. The Armstrong, the Lord Himself. You see, science is quick to give glory to man. They say, man walked on the moon, man left the earth. Listen. They say glory to man who left the earth and walked on the moon. Yeah. They failed to see the opposite. The God who made the moon Amen. came from beyond the moon and walked on the earth. Amen. 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 Shouldn't we give glory to the one who came out of the earth? Amen. To the earth and walked amongst us as Emmanuel? Amen. Amen. Very true, man. Amen. The other one was called Buzz Aldrin. Yes. And how they made a big buzz here on the earth <laughs> about the moon project. Amen. And the prophet says, the bee of death just makes a buzz, yeah. but it does not threaten the Christian. What a buzz of emptiness. So you see, science, before we close, is that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it can inundate you with its successes. Yes. So much so that if you are not spiritual and you cannot discern the scriptures, you'll end up giving glory to the tree of knowledge Amen. more than you give glory to the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Today, when you look at the way the phones are moving up. The cars are moving up. Technology is moving up. It leaves you with a wow in your mouth. Amen. But then the prophet of God says, as science moves in its realm, it should be an indication of how fast the word is moving also. Hallelujah. Amen. We're about to close. We are about to close. You see, when Apollo 11 was shot up, millions watched. Watch my wording, watch my wording. Yeah. Millions watched. But remember, it's called Apollo. Amen. Can <laughs> you see how Satan, the greatest battle ever fought, is in the mind? Yeah, yeah. He's projecting something to these people that are watching. Watch me. Yes. Apollo. I'm piercing the skies. I'm supposed to be going to the moon. This Apollo thing was the 20th of July, 1969. When it returned, this is a fact of science. Yeah. When that capsule in which they return has to enter Earth, there is friction. Yeah. Biosphere, atmosphere, you name all those spheres. I, we can give them to you, but we'll be still on till 5 p.m. Yeah. You can Google them, all the spheres that God has surrounded us with. So there is friction when the capsule enters the earth. Now, everybody had the fear that they might not make it back to earth. Amen. The timing. The second fear was. What if they 
explode upon entering because of the friction. So mm -hmm. 550 million people were watching as the capsule of Apollo 11 re-entered the Earth. Amen. They saw that big ball of fire and the next thing that emerged, they saw Apollo. <laughs> mm. Are you reading between the lines? Yes, and they applauded Apollo. <laughs> they applauded the big fire um, that was made to come down out of the heavens. Yes. Mm. And they say membership to Mr. Babylon quadrupled. Amen. Amen. That's right. Uh -huh. Did you hear that? Amen. That's right. Can you see Revelation 13 playing out? Yes, we can. Boy, close. Don't miss the next two powerful quotes. If you punch in the words on your message table, Pope, United States, yes, prophecy. Mm. Yeah. A quote comes up from 1954. It used to be invasion of the United States, but they have changed it to acts of the Holy Spirit. Voice of God changed it. And it is paragraph 87. We all know this quote. The Pope coming out of the United States of America, 1954. Yeah. Before I close, but very few know the next quotation in 1962, which would be from 1954 to 1962, almost seven years later. Amen. You now punch in the words, Patriarch wrote, wrote, right? wrote page mm. a quote comes up from the way of a true prophet Amen. i'm taking my time pastor before i close take your time bro. and you are going to read slowly and i always say slowly Amen. Okay. if you can play the tape Amen. Mm. From paragraph 218 to 221, even 222, a man writes a prophet a letter. Must yeah. have been a message believer from another place. And he includes with that letter a paper cutting. Mm. And the prophet is repeating that in the quote that the man is saying, Look at the paper cutting. Pope John the 23rd had just been to America and Amen. came out of America Malaria. to go back to Rome. Amen. And the man said, but Brother Branham, you spoke about this years ago. Amen. And Amen. don't miss paragraph 221. The prophet says, I said, Sure, brother, sure. It's coming to pass. What's it's coming to pass? Amen. Amen. There you go. The prophet himself identified his prophecy of 1954 Hallelujah. and said in 1962, when Pope John the 23rd came into America and left the United States to go back there, his seat. And he died that year, you know. Amen. Mm. The prophet said the prophecy was fulfilled. Amen. I ain't finished yet. I ain't finished yet. Hallelujah. When Pope John the 23rd left America to go back to Rome, the next year, Pope Paul the sixth and them who followed him, succeeded him. Mm then signed the documents of his visit to America, John the 23rd, to implement the squeeze. 
to bring about the mark. And here are the quotes. We are closing. Yeah. Please punch in Catholics. Yeah. Bring Pope John 23rd, 23rd with a hyphen, 20 hyphen, 3rd, Protestant, exactly what Bible said. Mm. A quote comes up in 1962-10-14, Stature of a Perfect Man, paragraph 337. Brother Benham nails it for the second time when he speaks about Pope John the 23rd, Pentecostals swallowing it up, Protestants and all, and he says, there you are. There you are, yeah. Yeah. Now, my brothers, two more quotes, and I give over to the pastor. Now we're <coughs> coming to 1963. I'm going to show you how four years in following, or four quotes. Yeah. Brother Ben says, there you are, it's happened, there you are. Now we mm -hmm. come to 1963, 12 stroke 29, look away to Jesus, um, part 39. He says, I'm warned of this. It is already in writing. There you go. Amen. Amen. That Amen. little church is like this. The tabernacle will be closed one of these Amen. days. Amen. Yes. Already in writing. When did he start? Pope John the 23rd, 62. Continued by Paul the 6th. They signed it in 63. But why have they not been able to implement it? Hallelujah. God has frozen them in time until <laughs> the bride ripens under those seven seals, seven <laughs> Sundays. And <laughs> then when they strike, the rapture is upon us. Yes. Hallelujah. The last quotation will Amen. be in 1964, 07 stroke 19. Beast of the Trumpets, Amen. paragraph 204. He says it's already in writing here in this nation now. Yes. Already in writing here in this nation. He had been crying from 1962, this prophet did, saying, there's my vision, there's my vision, there's my vision. Wake up, little bride. So you see, not all miracles are of God. Amen. Amen. Now I tell you, as I close, we've seen the raising of Sister Mary at the Branham Tabernacle. We've seen the raising of Brother Way, who had a murmuring heart. We've seen the creation of squirrels. Yes. In our day, we've seen the Colorado storm tamed. Amen. We heard of Billy Paul, our brother tell of a testimony of a man who was born without eyes in his sockets, with empty sockets, and the prophet said, what color would you like your eyes to be? Amen. When an amen was spoken, there were eyes in that socket. We've seen amen. wine multiplied at the Branham Chapter of Communion. And the greatest sign before I go is you. Amen. Believe in the message of the hour. Amen. As for miracles, Luke 10, 20, Jesus said, rejoice not for miracles and for spirits being subject to you, but rejoice Amen. Amen. because your names are called and written in heaven. Amen. That's why in the seals, 115 questions and answers, 1963-03-24. Yeah. The book does not say Almond Neville or William Branham or George Martin or anyone of the beloved names we cherish. He says the book shows the mystery. Amen. We ourselves by faith believe. Amen. That's how the book is calling our name. Yes. Revelation 10, 10, as you eat the book, you become what you eat, correct? 
Amen. As you eat the book, you become your new name. You become your new name. You become your new name. I sign off. Amen. 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 Amen.